Je suis hello guys you are warmly welcome to the channel again and today's video is about a trip from kumasi to cape coast so here is a get ready with me as i go there so please stick to the video and don't forget to like subscribe and leave a comment under the comment section a place you wish you should visit in cape coast Hello guys, you are warmly welcome to the channel. If you are new here, kindly don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the, this video, leave a comment on the comment section, try and turn on the notification button to get notified whenever we post a new video. In today's video, it's about a trip from Kumasi to Cape Coast. It's about a road trip. So it's about a road trip from Kumasi to Cape Coast. So all I have to do is to stick to the video and try and leave a comment in the comment section. A place you wish you should visit at Cape Coast. As for we, we have some 11 or 12 budgeted places we will be visiting. So please leave a comment in the comment section. Show us the place we wish to visit. Please stick to the video. So here is where I'm coming to take my car. You know we are we are three people in this channel. This channel we are just we are three. So I have to go to Obuasi. That's where the two people stay. So I'm going to Obuasi. So I'm picking car from here to go to Obuasi now. Then I will then pick some at Obuasi to keep push. I say today's video is a road trip. So all you have to do is to stick with us. I'm going to take you to where and the road from Obuasi to keep push.
subscribe to the channel like and share this video as we as you will be touring around Cape Coast this first pass Masala. I'm really tired that's why my voice I can't speak louder I'm really really tired but I have to sleep the next day you will work this first pass Masala. Team with the tall guy climbing. Guys, thank you for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed this first part.
castle of some people in dungeons for others. Built in the year 1664 by the English, one of the coast of Africa was estimated to have about 66 forts and castles, 42 of them to be in the guard. But presently, as we speak, we have just 19 forts, three castles. So you might be wondering why we had about 42 forts and castles in Ghana. That is because Ghana happens to have gold in abundance. It is written in some of our history books that the Europeans came in here to spread the gospel for casting. It was in the truth. Their sole purpose for coming down here was one, to find gold, two, humans. Later, the gospel spread anyway. But ideally, they came to find gold. And why do I say that? Now, before the Europeans came down to our shores, the Arabs had first or once been here. They occupied the eastern and northern aspects of Africa. They were trading with these Africans. So they were providing the European world. Hello, you all come. We just started. Okay. Hi, guys. So the Arabs were providing the European world with gold and human resources. So yes, they wanted to know where this gold was coming from. And upon their search, they realized it is from sub saharan Africa. And how did they got to know the gold is from South Saharan Africa? Now, if you can recall, let's go back to the Mali Empire. Now, this is an empire with a king or emperor who lived, made a certain journey, and during the journey, dropped so much gold that he devalued the price of gold. And per that, they realized, oh, I see. So Sub-Saharan Africa had a lot of gold like this. The Portuguese took the lead. Somewhere 1471, they were on our soil. But before getting here, they had once been to Cape Verde. Upon reaching Gold Coast, present day Ghana, Alumina to be precise, they realized there were a lot of gold. So they named the area El Mahina, which is what to be Alumina we know today. Alumina happens to be in place with the name Anuma Sakrum. Is it with what? Sorry. The name Anamasa. Yeah. Yeah, that was the name. Ah, okay. So yes, they were trading in gold. And somewhere in 1482, they built Elmina Castle as a warehouse, a place where gold and other resources would be kept, but later it was transformed into slave dungeons. That is the first and the oldest European building along the shores of West Africa. The second castle we have in Ghana happens to be the Christian Bok Castle at Osu in Accra, built by the Danes in the year 1661. So this is the smallest and the youngest castle, the Cape Coast Castle. And this was built purposely for the transatlantic slave trade, meaning humans would be kept in here, awaiting slave ships to come take them out. Now upon the discovery of the new world, fertile lands were discovered. Those who claim to have discovered the new world started plantations in that state. I use the word claim because to discover means to bring something to be. Why not, right? Now you go meet somebody. Did you bring the sample? That person there? No. You Hello guys, welcome to the channel. Today we are at the Asapo, Royal Street. In the market in the magazine to listen to the history about this place and also show you so guys thank you for watching this video hope you enjoyed it and we had the history about it this best part Marcella.
Bureau Beach Resort. Oh, that's a good place I will recommend for you. This coming Christmas for your holidays and some tour you want. This Bureau Beach Resort. Let me see the noise. Hope you've heard the noise. Yeah. I'm at Biwa Beach Resort. So here, I think these are old, old boats. So, some are spoiled. So, actually, these are the boats they use for fishing, and these are old ones, as you can see from below. They are rotten. The one they use is on the ocean. So guys, this is how they manufacture, uh, this is how they carve their boats, as you can see. And this too is a newly carved one. Very huge. Castle for some people and dungeons for others. Built in the year 1664 by the English. All along the coast of Africa, it's estimated to have about 66 forts and castles, 42 of them to be regarded. But presently, as we speak, we have just 19 forts, 3 castles stranded. So you might be wondering why we had about 42 forts and castles in Ghana. That is because Ghana happens to have gold in abundance. It is written in some of our history books that the Europeans came in here to spread the gospel. It wasn't the truth. We are so purpose for coming down here was one to find gold, two humans. Later, the gospel spread anyway. But ideally, we came to find gold. And why do I say that? Now, before the Europeans came down to our shores, the Arabs had first always been here. They occupied the eastern and northern aspects of Africa. They were trading with these Africans. So they're providing the European world. Hello, you all come. We just started. Okay. Hi guys. So the Arabs were providing the European world with gold and human resources. So yes, they wanted to know where this gold was coming from. And upon their search, they realized it's from sub Saharan Africa. Alright, you can come closer. Let me come closer. Let me. And how did they got to know the gold is from South Saharan Africa? Now, if you can recall, let's go back to the Mali Empire. Now, this is an empire with a king or emperor who lived, made a certain journey, and during the journey, dropped so much gold that he devalued the price of gold. And per that, they realized, oh, I see. So Sub-Saharan Africa has a lot of gold like this. The Portuguese took the lead. Somewhere 1471, they were on our soil. But before getting here, they had once been to Cape Verde. Upon reaching Gold Coast, present day Ghana, Alumina to be precise, they realized there were a lot of gold. So they named the area El Marina, which is probably to be Alumina we know today. Alumina happens to be a village with the name Anuma Sakrum. The village is what? Sorry. The name Anomasa. 
So yes, they were trading in gold. And somewhere in 1482, they built Elmina Castle as a warehouse, a place where gold and other resources would be kept, but later it was transformed into slave dungeons. That is the first and the oldest European building along the shores of West Africa. The second castle we have in Ghana happens to be the Christian Bok Castle at Osu in Accra built by the Danes in the year 1661. So this is the smallest and the youngest castle, the Cape Coast Castle. And this was built purposely for the transatlantic slave trade, meaning humans would be kept in here, awaiting slave ships to come take their land. Now upon the discovery of the New World, fertile lands were discovered. Those who claimed to have discovered the New World started plantations in that state. I use the word claim because to discover means to bring something to him. Why not, right? Now you go meet somebody. Did you bring the sample? That person there? No. You didn't. So guys, welcome back to the channel. We are at the Asin Kushia Palace, the magnificent palace in the uh, central region, which is believed to be the biggest palace in West Africa. When completed, it is... This town offers you a lot of interesting places to visit. So here is a Jinsem Crocodile Pond. Wow. So this is like the entrance of the town. So it says, I'm not moving out of the town. So it says, bye bye. You will never forget us, safe journey. So, please don't forget to like this video. So, I'm about, I'm about getting out of the town. Okay, I'm about entering the cleanest town in Ghana. Nana Pra Ajinsem Ark. Welcome to Asinkoshi. Hello guys, I really enjoyed my trip in the cleanest town in Ghana. Please don't forget to like, share, comment in the comment section. Please, please press pass. Masalam. Hello guys, you are welcome back to the channel. Today we are at a, we are at a very beautiful place in Central Region. Precise. The place is very clean with over 500 dustbins along the road, as you can see. Okay. You just follow me as I show you places. Please comment on the comment section when you find just a rubber. Hey! Julie, you, Anna. Yeah, I'm the He's the only king in Africa with this kind of car. 
Ini yang mulu. Guys, thank you for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, make sure to like, subscribe, share, click the notification button to notify you whenever we post. Peace, best guys. Peace. Charlie. Wow. Charlie, this palace will show you very beautiful and it's because we need, obviously it's not completed. But based on the lands, the plot and the pillars, trust me, this palace. Is the biggest palace in West Africa. How? Oh. See? The f it's, hey! hey trust me. This palace is very, very big. Ha! Huh. I know in my local areas that palace is like just a uh, what just a uh, a three bedroom with a big hall they use for elders meeting. I didn't know. Wow. And I'm really, really excited. This palace is coming from the motherland. Wow. The biggest palace in West Africa, when completed to be precise. Wow. This is the palm wine junction in the palace. Charlie, trust me, this palace is crazy. Wow. Hey. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, I don't say boo boo me. What Jimmy? Ah, So guys welcome back to the channel we are at the asin kushia palace the magnificent palace in the uh, central region which is believed to be the biggest palace in west africa when completed it is 7.1 acres so guys follow and see more They are dustbins all around. They are dustbins all around Charlie. This town is very neat. Wow, wow, wow.
And you know one thing I like about this town. They are dustbins all around. All the uh, flag like red, yellow, green, like the flag of Ghana signs are dustbins. All of them here are dustbins. Wow. So you can't find anything on the floor. Oh Charlie. Guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are at the Asin Kushia Palace, which is the biggest palace in West Africa. To just view the place and show you how the place is. So guys, follow us and see more. Baby way. Guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are at the Asin Kushia Palace, which is which will be the biggest palace in West Africa when completed. To show you the place and actually let you have a view for yourself. And it is 4.1 acres, so follow and see more. Ah. Like any other grass, the more you cut, the more it expands. Just so you don't cut so it's not as many as you may think. Rather than that, so that be more than this. As a grass, bamboo remains one of the fastest growing plants, with some species growing almost one meter in a day. If you see a young bamboo shoot, in a good condition, you can even observe it as it's growing. Yeah. And it's the only plant that you can see it grow physically. You can also hear it as it expands and grows. Bamboo has lots of uses, from furniture to construction and also in building. But it has a very good tensile strength, which is even higher than some metal. And when treated well, it can last longer than some iron or steel in the construction industry. Look at it more. Right away you're coming here. Are you going? Come on, let's go. Sorry, I'm sorry for grandma. You are a tall guy. We soon enter Kakum Primary Forest. Primary Forest is a vegetation which has not been cut down. Secondary Forest has been cut and is going back. That's the difference. Yeah. Physically, you can observe Secondary Forest to have a lot of undergrowth, a lot of vines, entanglements. Basically, one or two layers. And it's difficult to walk through because everything can reach enough sunlight. Soon you enter the primary forest and you notice that the forest floor is dark. And because of that, not everything can survive. So it has a sparse undergrowth and you can easily walk through the primary forest without having to cut through your way. So you get there soon and you observe. And this is only about 25 year old secondary forest. Whatever big tree you see around maximum is 25 years. But in the primary forest, you can find trees that are 800 years, 500 years, 400 years. And we even believe some are 1,000 plus years. So trees can grow beyond 3,000 years. How I wish I can live that long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, if men would live like maybe the world would not be a better place to live. Yeah, yeah. But as long as there are more trees for plants is good for our planet than there are more humans and, and especially if our behaviors are not sustainable but maybe for me more of me would make the world a better place how about you you should ask your thoughts yeah. okay yeah. if you continue <laughs> right, so it's another another level and another kind of cut. We are just about entering the primary forest. Have you observed any difference in the atmospheric pressure, vegetation pressure, 
light intensity. Have you observed? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, it's more spacious, like well, the, the, this place, but it's more, uh, less dense. Yeah, less dense. Yeah. Sure. Oh, that's a good explanation. Mm -hmm. And about, then yeah. you can only see sunlight yeah. penetrating mm -hmm. very limited here. Yeah. Yes, so that's the primary color. It's only two percent sunlight that is able to reach the ground, and there are four layers that three of them are able to screen and see the sunlight. That gives Papu a key definition of a tropical rainforest. In the rainforest, by definition, is characterized by continuous close canopy layers, and then. It's also moist that it is unable to catch bush fire. That's a recent definition of a rainforest or a tropical rainforest. So Kakum it should be hard to catch bush fire, even though you have to try as much as possible to avoid that. Six thousand hectares or eight to five thousand acres of rainforest. I know me has a lot of land and he's selling land. So <laughs> but Kakum has more land than him. But after he has sold his land, our land will be intact. And I start working for Kakum. <laughs> Still from the inside. <laughs> sure. Then we employ you to come and work here. So, 85,000 acres is a lot. And the home to many animals. Unfortunately, we haven't identified all the animals in this virus here. So, we believe there are more. Few common ones we have identified include elephants. And currently, our elephant population stands around 200. So, Anywhere you know, that more or less of elephants. So these are not the usual elephants you know. They are called forest elephants. The small in size. Small in size, maybe in terms of shoulder height. They are two point two meters. So you know your height? Uh, yeah, not close to two meters. Close to two meters. Close. Okay, the forest elephants are two point two meters. So quite longer than. The yeah, much taller yeah, than you, yeah. though small in size. And these yeah. elephants are not used to human presence, so they come further and deeper into the forest. And we know very little about them, so we haven't been able to track or observe them. It's difficult to get closer to them. They are so sensitive that they can sense up to two kilometers away. That's about 2,000 meters away. They can notice the presence of humans and keep going. That's how their sizes they are so fast and they can reach a speed of about 45 kilometers per hour. And with that speed, um, well, with that speed, they can maintain that for a minimum of two hours. Yes, without having to go for a So it's difficult. The only evidence we have is CCTV footage or capture camera that we have been able to have images of them. And then another well, evidence we have here is uh, sometimes they go out of the forest to destroy farms. After destroying farms, they run back to the forest to sell for and safety. And yes, when they also go to the farm, they leave their signs like leftovers, down and other activities that they are here. So, so we are also often told that we can come and track the elephant of Kakum, where we have forest rangers who patrol the forest. And whatever they see them, they take coordinates. So we are able to co communicate so that we can know the last places they were seen. They can also tell us the direction they were going. I did some last two months and it was with impressive um, observation. So you can come here and do the elephant tracking. So me, I should know and then add that to your packages. Okay. Yes, and that's it. Right. Um, compared to the forest, uh, how big? Is the savanna and the forest elephant because uh, I know the savannas are really really big they really because big. like they don't really go through the forest so yeah. they are big sure. so compared to the forest okay. like, so as I said the forest elephants are usually small in size 2.2 to the height especially yeah for the highest they can reach the majority of them fall around 1.8 yeah, 1.8 meters to 2.0 meters. And they move in groups, usually led by females. If you're male, at adults, 
the five kids exclude you from the group and the adult men live solitary life occasionally two or three adult men will come together and form a small bachelor group to the type of work as part of the group if a female is on duty they may call on one of the bachelors to come and then look for them but after coming to do that the bachelors will also disown him now go your way so the adult male will try to look most of the work is done by the female. They are very intelligent, protective, and they are able to move and guide the rest of the group. That's how much you know about the forest elephant. And they also have good memories. They visit here 10 years along the line, they go to the same place, run the same time, and they keep moving in that direction. They also hate fire or any source of light. If you set fire, they try as much as possible to get later and then turn off the fire when they can see it in the forest. So, so, we are hoping to know more about them. But other animals that may interest you, we have leopards, antelopes, dikers, porcupines. Well, dikers are for West African antelope species. The ants found elsewhere, except in the West African region. There are local names, we, call, we have the Oyo. We have the Odabo, if you have heard of them. Yes, that's a bird. <laughs> yes, we also have honey badger, we have bush babies, we have porto, and then other animals that are conservation issues. Birds, we have parrots, kingfishers, kiwakos, bubbles, doves, pigeons, and the like, all in Takuma. And the activities we offer into the canopy of food, which is what we are going to do. The canopy offer us the opportunity to go on the bridges to see the forest layers and have a breakthrough vision of the forest. That will be about 30 minutes crossing and observing the beauty of the forest and get down. After the canopy, we have nature walk. We have trails that are in the beaches that will take you deeper so you can go and observe species. Though we don't promise to see animals, we may be lucky. Encounter them because it's a natural forest, we hadn't killed the animals. Anything you see is on a chance, but we will do our best to take you to promising places where you may have higher chances to see them. After the canopy, each time we permit you, you can do 30 minutes or one hour before the forest and come back so you can learn more. Then we have tree house, we have built on top of trees in Kakum, where a house is seated on a tree, fully furnished. You can go sleep and have a peace of mind. When you go there, you, you don't have telephony network. Maybe the only way you can communicate is through say, radio devices. It will give you an opportunity to immerse yourself in the forest. Be off from the radio frequencies and other things and be in the forest by yourself and alone. Hearing and listening to the sounds of the natural forest is just enough to heal you, rejuvenate you, make you look good. It is a bed where you can come and observe it in Kakum. And any of the 300 plastics that you have in Kakum. You can also come with your own interest that I want to see snakes. I want to learn snakes. I want to sleep with snakes. Huh? <laughs> any interest you come with, we can assist you and take you on for the limitless opportunities that exist here in Kakum Nasmata. Thank you very much. Any questions, okay. comments, yeah. observations? So it's just not your need to do it. So let's just continue. Only, do you have anything to add? Oh no. The potential things we have on our planet is ebony. So it's back in color. The key uses of ebony these days is for making piano keys. So the black part of piano keys are made of ebony and the white part are made of ivory. Okay. The ebony is really two elephant fat. The yellow is usually to the height of elephant by measuring their markings in the ebony. Usually, elephants like meddling in mud to keep their body temperature cool. After meddling in mud, they scratch their mother's body in the ebony. So, we are able to leave traces of mouth or hair to be able to measure to know the height of Elephant. and ebony can carry their weight. But the ebony is the only plant that is sent in water. If any other plant is put in water, it's the ebony is sent because the density is heavier than that of water. 
you put ebony in fire to calm them. Usually, it's prepared in making chicken utensil handle. Okay. It's a very poor conductor of heat. It's unable to burn. So, please welcome to put in the ebony. This is about 450 years ebony tree. Mm -hmm. This is 450 years. And still growing. Mm -hmm. Does it sing? <laughs> because we have ebony singer. <laughs> it doesn't yes. sing. Eh? She actually chose the name ebony because she said she was dark and so expensive and valuable at it. So, uh, she the name. so he came here to choose the name ebony, right? <laughs> 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 okay. So here, I think these are old, old boats. So some are spoiled. So actually, these are the boats they use for fishing. These are old ones, as you can see from below. They are rotten. And the one they use is on the ocean. Because maybe I'm not good in the Can you be? See? Because maybe I'm no good in the Oh. So, I'm not good at this, but I will try some. I've seen people play with it. Wow. Yeah. Welcome back to the channel again. Today we are at the Port Amsterdam to listen to the history since we are Africans. We had Europeans as our leaders, so it was one of their forts they built. So let's go and listen to the history about this port. Lika, through Lika, my final reaction. Through Lika, from my final reaction. Cut. 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 English. This is the first port built by the British in 1631. And they used it for merchants for a good business. Yeah. And in 1663, the Dutch came over and fought with the British and overturned them. And they used this port for slavery. Yeah. In 1664. Okay. Okay. Guys, this is the entrance here. We're here for upper and lower primary. Let's go. 
Ah oui, bien. market the top here Last man standing. Last man standing. <laughs> so this is all we have for the for the video today. All you have to do is to subscribe, like, and share this video, and and don't forget to comment under the comment section. At least let's take this channel to at least six k by the end of this yeah 6k is enough by the end of this year please try and share this video try and be with your boy here is amas at the new channel please pass pass masala <laughs>
Me van más. Eh, un bo, un bo, bo, un navajo. Mi chava mi ni tibiaba. So guys, thank you for watching this video. Hope you've seen how the coconut beach reserve is and hope you enjoyed it. It's best part. Where are you going?